Oi, oi, oi. 4.30 in the morning, waiting for the taxi, headed to the airport, going to Spain with uh, Ben from Oxygen Archery. We're going to go and try and slay some red deer. They might be still in their rut, on the tail end of it, I'm not sure. Uh, Ibex, Mouflon, uh, Wild Boar are the uh, species we might run into as well. So that'll be cool. They've got a couple of feeders on the property for the for the for the animals. Um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty damn sick, and I'm looking forward to it. Come on the journey with me. Uh, it's been too long. Ready to do this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're at Let the. Just wake up first. Let me just wake up a little bit. Yeah, we're at the airport now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first of the Spanish series. This is gonna be a little bit different, a little bit more like PA, where it's almost a day-by-day uh, -day account of the trip. This is my first time to Spain, and uh, I really enjoyed it. So I just wanted to show you as much as I could uh, as possible. It's also Corona times, hence the masks. So I wanted to document that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the support. Uh, we're about aboard now. Uh, so probably see you in Spain. All going to plan anyway. So here we are in uh, Alicante and we're just waiting for our luggage. Ben's already got his cooler. Uh, we, we hope the uh, customs guys aren't having archery competitions with our bow, bows down there. But uh, check out this road drop. Like, maybe it doesn't look like much on the camera but they just come and then smash straight into the pad down there. So uh, we've just uh, had some lunch, dropped us or dropped some stuff off at uh, Ben's parents' place, and then picked some other stuff up, some supplies, food, and things like that. Uh, and now we're finally uh, we're just on our way to uh, the hunting spot. The uh, Spain's beautiful, but the excitement now is starting to get it's good. It's getting real. Getting closer and closer and closer to uh, potentially uh, releasing an arrow. So I'm looking forward to it. only describe Spain as barrenly beautiful. As we get further and further out of the city, I fall in love with it more and more. The country is rich with history and there is no shortage of monuments from days gone by.
All righty. So uh, we're basically here. We've got one more job, let's get some water. And this is like just piped out of the, uh, the natural spring on the hill. So yeah, pretty cool. We've already uh, we've already seen some red-legged red-legged partridge. Um, so that's cool. You know, if nothing else, we can say we saw some game species. We picked up some trail cameras too, and we got some. Uh, I wish I'd recorded that. It was so damn funny. Um, like they didn't speak any English, we didn't speak any Spanish, and through Google Translate, and then we ended up ringing Risto to do some. Who's uh, the guy who kind of manages the area here? To, to talk for us um but yeah that was pretty funny that was really good I, I i got told on the phone a couple of days ago to ask for like stock food basically for bait so like uh uh sheep pellets or something like that and i couldn't remember and i said cow and then they didn't have any cow food but it turned out they had lamb food and lamb food was what we wanted and it was pretty hilarious i think you probably had to be there now that we had the water for our four and a bit days hunting, all that was left was to get into the hunting grounds. And as we came up the drive, my nerves and anticipation was building to a climax. But little did I know, I didn't have to wait long for our first bit of excitement. And, uh, unfortunately, maybe unfortunately, hopefully we can get out soon. We're just seeing some ibex already. Really close to where we were staying. Uh, so that's that's very encouraging to see. Um, it's awesome, in fact. Are we staying down here, are we? Or down on there. Like, I can, uh, yeah, hopefully we can see them in a second. Put a stalk on these things. That'll be freaking sick. <laughs> Unfortunately, with the sun at my back, I couldn't see through the LCD monitor properly to pick out the ibex. So to help show you guys the plan, and considering we've only just arrived to Spain and have not had a proper chance to show you the layout of the land, this is what's going on. So this is the road we came down, and this is the place that we're staying, which we alluded to in the video. Over here is where we've seen the ibex. You can see how close they are to us. Now up on that shelf where the ibex are, it actually picks up into a bit of a hill shape uh, and flattens out where you can see that paddock on the right hand side. Now the wind is coming from the direction that we came in the car and the idea is that we're going to uh, head down the road, continue down the road and then loop back around behind the Ibex so hopefully the wind is good. Sounds like a solid plan, let's see how it turns out. Now, as you've seen in some of my previous videos, I'm not exactly the best stalker in the world, but Spain, with how crunchy and dry the ground is, was as difficult as it was in PA with the dry autumn leaves on the ground. Now, our main goal here is to try and get up and cut these goats off as fast as possible. So not only is there less dry sticks on the road, so it's a little bit quieter than going through the bush. It's actually also a lot faster. But as we start to approach the spot where the ibex are likely to be, we slow right down. I have absolutely no knowledge about ibex and it was very hard to find anything to read about before this trip. The only thing I have to go off is my experience with feral goats in New Zealand. And if we'd spooked the feral goats like that in New Zealand, they would have pushed up this ridge line, no worries at all. 
so at this stage I am sure that they're going to be around here somewhere as we're probably about two or three hundred meters up the ridge line from where we last saw the ibex the next part of the stalks actually missing from the footage for some reason we were having some trouble with the GoPro and I think maybe this is why but anyway we left you off here where the X is and from here we continue down the path up the boundary line and then across into this clear cut here with the aim to stay close to the tree line and hope we spot them in the open before they spot us just when we thought maybe the stalk was over and we got to the edge of the bush close to the where we were staying I happened to glance back left and catch a glimpse of one ibex sitting on a rock behind some of the pine trees which explains why we couldn't see them from the clearing so once again the stalk was back on and now we just had to get downwind of them Unfortunately for me, they saw me before I saw them and they booked it back up the clearing from where we'd just come. So, um, a plan worked for the stalk. We managed to come back down on top of them, but unfortunately we missed them by about 100 metres. We went down over, back down through these trees here. And as we came down through there, I looked back up this way and they were still on the rock ledge just over here. And the uh, first time I saw them, they didn't see me. Uh, second time I saw one of them and they looked, looked back at me. So really good though, we were within 50, 50 metres at one stage there. <sighs> Pretty cool excitement for only like I'm still in my travel clothes, so. <laughs> Sweet as. This is a... Uh, this is our digs for the few days here. A few beds on the floor. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. A bit of leaking. It uh, must have been quite an expensive place, I reckon, at one stage, because it's had a lot of work done to it. But it's just all fallen down now. It's. Yeah. But anyway, I think we're going to have some food. Um, I need to get changes in proper hunting gear uh, and then we are going to go and sit oh yeah go sit by the cliff tonight an area called the cliff apparently get a lot of animals there it's like a natural water source so I think we're going to probably get a bit of a boogie on and do it so there's um, a couple of products that uh, are going to be using that are a bit different on this trip and actually I might as well load one up now so um, for anything bigger like the boars like we're about to go out and try and get Piggy Wiggies. Uh, I'm going to be running the True Blue uh, 
crossbreeds, and, and I've paid for these myself. I'm not sponsored by these at all. I do know uh, one of the owners, Max, and uh, he's asked me to try these out, but I did buy them, and he didn't give them, give, didn't give them to me for free. So some of you guys might have seen them on the live streams. Um, they're basically another 100 grams, grains, sorry, that you uh, add to the front of your arrow, and then it's just locked on with the O-ring, and obviously you get another two inches cut. So, um, let me just put that one back on there before I forget. So I've, because um, I've got sight tape on, on my bow, I've, I've sighted both these arrows. So the heavier one, uh, and then also the uh, the uh, the lighter arrows as well. So it's uh, quite handy. I don't think you could run two different grain arrows for a pin, a pin, a fixed pin sight. Uh, well, I don't know, anyway. Now there's, yeah, I mean, it's not too bad at all, actually. So yeah, this will be interesting to see how it goes. Um, it's a real good way to add just, you know, instant FOC. I, I've cut, all well, these arrows are cut shorter just to uh, keep the spine a bit stiffer, but should be damn good. Uh, and I'm looking forward to testing them out anyway. But like I say, for things that are a bit fast, like fallow deer or, or something like that, I'll, I'll stick to the lighter arrows um, just to keep that speed up. Um, so they can go in the, in the, the quiver and I'll probably do another one in a second. Um, just so got one or two there, uh, and then the next thing we're using in this one, um, I haven't haven't paid for, got given this one by Dana at uh, Hunters Friend Europe. It's Scent Thief. So you guys are thinking about ah, oh, just another bloody scent repellent, or you know, um, this uh, actually, which is kind of why Flinter and I asked you in the podcast what you guys thought about scent eliminators because this one's different. It actually turns off the deer's nose, so it's the only one in the world that does it. Um, and it's it, once we start using it, it actually turns ours off a little bit as well. Um, so we are going to go and do some sits tonight, and uh, kind of on purpose, not worry too much where the wind's coming from, and see how we go. So it could be pigs and stuff coming, but it's uh, it's all organic. It's natural oil blends, um, and um, we've had we've had a little bit of a sniff because it's accidentally sprayed and it's uh, it smells like Vicks kind of or Vicks wavy rubber. What did you say? Uh, tiger balm. If you guys know yeah, what tiger balm is, so um, and it re re relaxes the the uh, bits in the animal's nose and so they can't actually smell. <laughs> so yeah, this is like the next level scent eliminator because it doesn't el eliminate the scent; it eliminates their uh, you know their ability to smell. So scent thief. Um, this is totally a product plug, obviously, but uh, we haven't used it before. I'm interested to see how it goes. Uh, and uh, Dana at Hunter's Friend in Europe is the only European importer for it. So um, hopefully this does the trick and we can start getting it around uh, everyone in Europe because that'll do wonders for everybody sitting in stands, especially in Sweden and stuff, and not having to worry about the wind and things. that would be amazing. So, yep, yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, so... Um, we're uh, we're off. I'm gonna go and do this sit for some some whatever comes across. I'm just heading up to the car now. We've got a big sack of feed to put out, so we'll take the car out there this time uh, and put it all out. We just had some nice pasta for dinner, and uh, yeah, really feeling quite pumped for tonight. It's gonna be a good night, I reckon, even if we don't see anything. It'll be pretty sweet. <laughs> Looking forward to it. So, this is the setup here. Uh, there used to be a bait barrel down there. I wonder if we can see it actually, but something's ripped it out of the ground. There's a pig. See there? A chain. And it's actually all the way down. I'm trying to make it sit down there. So, it's. Uh, Beautiful evening and a great way to finish a first day. However, nothing came in that night. And this concludes the first day of the Spanish hunting trip. 
Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. It means the world. Cheers, everyone.